Ontario, Canada, on the north shore of Lake Ontario, has played host to many traction fans from around the world. These many visitors to the city have over the years witnessed its changing character made possible by the development of its superb transit system. Starting with the purchase of the President's Conference Committee 4000 series cars from CCF in Montreal in 1938, Toronto's love of the Streamliner has spanned over 45 years. Here, in films shot in the 1940s, we witness how the PCCs provided smooth, comfortable transportation from the expanding suburbs to the bustling downtown core. These Dundas Street Streamliners, shown at City Hall Loop and Bay and Albert, would eventually replace an aging Peter Witt and Brill fleet of over several hundred cars over the next 25 years. The Wits and the Brills had served Toronto well, but their slowness and ancient design had made them a chore to operate. As Toronto's streets became more congested with automobiles, the new PCC streamliners were designed to lure people to the comforts of a smooth, quick, quiet ride. In scenes from the early 1940s at Bloor and Dundas, in Toronto's West End, we witnessed the PCC's role of providing both crosstown as well as downtown access to suburban commuters. On August 24, 1949, the first of the Class A7 4400 series multiple unit cars were placed in revenue service on the Bloor Danforth line. In this film, a single multiple unit car is eastbound at High Park and Bloor. Ted Wixon, editor of the TTC's Coupler magazine, and Jack Knowles, of Traction Historian, explains how some of these cars came to remain in service for some 36 years. In uh, November 1972, the Toronto Transit Commission uh, uh, made a landmark decision uh, to retain streetcars indefinitely. This was uh, a little bit unexpected. There had been plans to phase out streetcars by 1980. Um, the implications of this decision uh, were immediate. Um, uh, firstly, um, a replacement for the PCC car, which was then approaching 30 years of age, had to be found. And secondly, the physical plant, the track work in place, uh, had to be uh, rebuilt uh, soon in the coming decade. Uh, one of the first tasks at hand after this decision was to uh, investigate the feasibility of rebuilding rehabilitating uh, a PCC car so that a certain number could be uh, so done while uh, a replacement vehicle was uh, designed and manufactured. Uh, there were 173 PCC cars rebuilt between 1972 and 1975. Is that right, Jack? I think so. Um, there were um, all 50 cars in the last group of cars purchased new after the war. That were done. That's the A8 class, and there were various cars selected from the A6 and A7 classes. These are the uh, the all-electric cars purchased after the war. Many of these cars, uh, in fact, the cars remaining today, um, as I speak, it's it's late 1985. There are about 80 cars still left serviceable. Uh, they're all from this group of rebuilt cars. Here in the Russell car yard in the late 1970s, we see an example of some rebuilt A6 4300 series cars, along with an ex-Cincinnati and Louisville car. The Queen Street cars seen in these scenes are still not rebuilt. The dash lights and blue colored interior were typical of the 4400 series cars when they were first delivered to the TTC. Jack Knowles, our traction historian, explains how some of the rebuilt was done. Basically included reinforcing the floors with uh, new welded steel, replacement of the plyboard flooring, also uh, new electrical harnesses, 
and of course a complete interior redecoration, body overhaul and paint to produce a, a serviceable car which would last about another 10 years. In these scenes from the summer of 1985, we see a 507 Long Branch car westbound at the Mimico Village Limit in Etobicoke. Notice that the car still retains its water bumper, which were originally installed when first refurbished. These cars are used sparingly on this road, and mostly in rush hours. This A6 4300 series car is southbound on Kingston Road at Queen, near the Greenwood Racetrack Loop. Route 502 was originally titled Downtowner, but with the arrival of the CLRVs in 1979, route names were changed to numbers. This scene shows the car in the evening rush hour. These PCC cars will no longer be running on the Kingston Road after the TTC takes delivery of the new articulated CLRVs in the late 1980s. The condition of this car appears to be in slightly above average condition. The cars that you're seeing, the 4300s, 4400s, and 4500s low, are the remains of the TTC's all-electric PCC car fleet. These cars prior to 1966 had quite definite assignments. The 43 and 4400s were assigned to Lansdowne and Danforth car houses, the 4400s being equipped with couplers for multiple unit operation were used predominantly on Bluer although they did appear on Carlton. The 4300s were the basic cars on Carlton, but they also appeared on lines such as Harvard, and even uh, very minor routes like Coxwell and Parliament got these cars uh, as a matter of custom. The, uh, the 4500 cars were assigned to St. Clair Car House on Witchwood Avenue, and worked basically on St. Clair Avenue and on the York Township lines, Oakwood and Rogers. But Oakwood and Rogers also had the second-hand cars from Cincinnati, 4550 to 4574. These scenes show the Witchwood car barns in the late 1970s, just before they were shut down for operations. And we see some rebuilt 4500 series PCCs on their way to their various destinations in the morning rush hour. Note that the numerical destination signs had not yet been installed on these cars. These signs would appear when the CLRVs would be delivered. The Witchwood Barns were built in 1913 and later served as dead storage yard for retired PCCs. The St. Clair 512 route is still served by these 4500 series cars in the mid 1980s. Very rarely do we see a 4300 series car on this route. Although 4400 series cars are never seen on this route except for rail train trips. These scenes are at Bathurst and St. Clair in the evening rush hour and show some of the few PCCs that still serve the route. This westbound 512 Keel car has just returned from looping at the Yum Street subway and we see it with passengers loading at Spadina Avenue. Westbound St. Clair cars are sometimes short-turned at Lansdowne Avenue and eastbound St. Clair cars from Lansdowne Avenue 
sometimes are a short turn at the St. Clair West subway station. The St. Clair West subway station serves as a transfer point for the Vaughn Road bus, the Christie bus, and the Bathurst Street buses, as well as these streetcars. Not all of Toronto's streetcars were rebuilt. The acquired streetcars from other North American cities were excluded. Ted Wixon explains how these odd cars came to Toronto. The post-war PCZ fleet uh, in Toronto uh, grew by leaps and bounds in the, the 1950s. Uh, as the price of a new PCC <coughs> escalated uh, dramatically, uh, the Commission looked around for bargain-priced cars. Uh, many American properties were turning to the diesel bus uh, primarily uh, through uh, General Motors uh, sales appeal and promotions. Um, TDC picked up cars uh, quite cheaply from Cincinnati, that was the first group, Cleveland, Birmingham, Kansas City. Uh, some of these cars were uh, had unique assignments over the years. The Kansas City cars uh, uh, were long remembered for running on St. Clair, assigned to Witchwood Car House. Um, all these cars ran right up until the early 1980s, the last of the second-hand cars and the non-rebuilt cars uh, were retired in the spring of 1982. After that time, a slowly declining number of rebuilt cars uh, would see service. Uh. These 4700 series A13 cars originally only ran on the Long Branch route and in the 1972 rebuild program would only have new numbers painted on them. The same would be true for the A11X Cleveland cars. These cars in the summer of 1977 were assigned to the 504 King route and the 505 Dundas route from Russell Car House. Here we see these cars in the service for the evening rush hour. Jack Knowles, our traction historian, explains how these imported cars were modified for TTC standards. Well, the cars were pretty well modified to conform to TDC standards in trim, uh, electrical equipment, sanders, and that type of thing. Uh, doors were changed to the TDC standard, but generally they retained the original seating and lighting. The Louisville cars, the A12 series, um, had uh, large ceiling fans which remained for a while. Uh, they were taken out at some point, were they not? Yes, they were, and the uh, the Cleveland Pullman cars also had those. The operators liked them, but found that they were too noisy to use when the passengers were in the cars. However, when they got to the loops at the end of the line, they turned them on and got a complete change of air in the car in very short order. Both the Pullman and ex-Louisville cars ran in service along the Bloor Danforth route. Then after the east-west subway was completed, these ex-Louisville cars operated along Queen Street in their multiple unit configuration. Jack Knowles discusses other unique features of the Toronto cars. The advanced light and the advertising hoods were put on in the 1930s before the first PCC cars came. There are a five lamp series bank across the 550 volt line and they were done for advertising promotional purposes to make the cars visible from a great distance at night and they achieved their purpose very well. It was quite easy to pick out a streetcar from three or four blocks away if it had the advanced lights turned on. 
the four dash lights that were in series with the advance light simply provided a uh, safety factor by making the car more visible at night and it also made it more attractive to place advertising on the fronts of the cars.